Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. Today we will be actually creating a pretty cool uh, website using Python. It will track COVID-19 stats throughout the world. And it's a pretty cool website. Uh, so we will be using the uh, coronavirus COVID-19 API to do this project. And we will be using PyCharm. Uh, yeah, like I haven't really used a lot of PyCharm in this like channel but i have actually it was my first editor from which i started to learn programming so it was a pretty it was pretty good so in case if you want to download pycharm you can just go to jetbrains.org and pycharm to download it so i'll click on new project and i will just name it like covid 19 tracker website i think that's good I'll choose an interpreter now. I'm using th this one. You can choose any other interpreter. You probably will have this already done with this one or whatever it is. Now you could like uncheck that, but I will have a welcome script and then we will just simply click on create. I'm actually using the color theme, so you might not have this from default. This color theme, you'll have dark hula or something, but I just went over and downloaded that color theme. Now I just went into this, just made this text a bit bigger. Alright, I think this is good. Also, I will be using the Vim keybind over here, so there might be a few differences in like keybinds. So I'll just make one more, a few files over here, so, uh, the files that we will need. So the main file will obviously be our website. Now I'll have a new Python file called. Uh, Yes. and one thing also before we start programming is that um, just all right i'll go over here click on main click on edit configurations and i will change my run and debug configurations and i will create a new configuration actually uh, named the test and i will actually provide it my script path it takes a second or two uh, to do that now once it's done just click on test click on ok then click on apply and then click on ok so now we will have a configuration for me and test so that's pretty good so first of all what you want to do is import a few uh, one library called requests so basically what this library will allow us to do is it will allow us to uh, take the data of the website uh, which is an api and also display the data and do the parsing. You can also take this as an API tutorial. Uh, it's a pretty simple API, so it will be really cool. So now what we need to do is we need to go and actually fetch the API data. So we just make a variable called actually first of all just as a good practice. I will just make one more called specify the URL for the api so we will make one variable called url uh, we will make it a string and then what you want to do is head on to google chrome go to this url and then you want to copy paste this uh, url like just go down and take get summary just copy that and paste and paste it over here once you are done with that, you want to do fetch the API data. So what you want to do is just type out response uh, is equals to requests dot get. Now I think this is not a pre-installed module, so just go pip the reinstall request or pip install request, and then just type out URL. So we want to get all of our data on this specified URL. We have already stored it in our variable. So now what we want to do is actually print out the response. So print out the response. So we just have our print response dot text. So whatever you name this, you just want to do that variable name dot text. Uh, just in case if you named this something else. Now I'll simply click on this button and run and this file and I will also put in a in bigger and there we go you can see we return all of this data uh, which is our response 
from here now if that's successful let's actually return a json response the reason why we will return a json response is because json is very easy to parse with so what we will do is i will actually get rid of it and i will also go over here go into visual mode and just get rid of all of it all right so taking the taking the response and converting it into json format so way, the way we do it is we make another variable called json underscore response and then we just type out this very simple thing called response dot json and then we just put these parentheses that's literally all you need to do now for this some people might think that we need to import uh, we need to import json but we actually don't need that uh, you use that for a little bit of like higher level processing for like such simple processes you don't need the, the json library otherwise you might so i'll just print out the json response for now you will see that there will be no difference in the response but when we'll but we will actually be able to pass through the response which we otherwise won't be able to so that's why so now if i will just run this again and again i'll just add on to zoom it in and you can see we again have all of our data we have an id a message and some other stuff all right so now let's just do some other actual important processing so what we want to do is actually want to loop through the response and print some stuff out but here's the thing if we actually try to loop through the response it will loop through this much only it won't loop through the actual inside stuff so the way that i think we will go about doing that it's pretty uh, uh pretty simple uh, uh, what i will do is just type out uh countries underscore list now if this won't be a list like this we will have this json stuff or I put away so what we say is for the json hated response what i want to do is i want to grab the i don't want to want the global thing i want the countries so i'll just say countries and i'll just type out that then what i'll do is loop over the countries for i in range for the len of countries I will go ahead and print i and I'm sorry it was not country it was country's list and uh, just for the sake of it actually it's okay so if I just run this program again uh, you will see that we have exactly 189 countries so that's something that we know now we won't change this now so now we know that the parsing of the json data was actually successful now what i will also just do here is i'll just go print and json response just for like if we want to check some things here and there which i will want to now so now that we have managed to grab the country's list we actually want to grab in the country name because we don't want the any anything to pop up when the user enters an incorrect country name so what we will do now is i will just type out this variable called country country underscore name underscore actually in rest so that stands for country's name in the response so for uh, what where how do we actually find the country's name in the response so we'll actually check we have this thing called country now we have already defined the countries list so what i will do is i will grab the countries list and from the countries list i want to grab what do you want to grab the country so i will just type out country and i will print out country name in res and you will see what happens first of all i will just comment this thing out right now uh, and save this file now if i just run this file again you will see what happens okay or oh, all right i just got my error so let me actually show you what my error is for that i will actually need to print out my json response so i'm just gonna comment these things out 
and put in a pass here all right so all right so let me actually show you what the error is and how can we actually fix it so if you see here uh, we have this in countries and we have the id and the country so instead of passing in the direct thing country you actually need to pass in i guess uh, We'll pass in 0 and 1. I think we pass in 1. So if I just run this again. There we go. As you can see, it has worked. Kind of. As you can see over here, we get Albania. But here's the problem. It's just printing the, the first country out. Which is something that we don't want. So what we will do is, I will actually... Uh, all right yeah so country okay all right so we will put in an i here so we'll loop through every single one of the country just a second guys i'm sorry if you heard any noise i'm sorry for that so we'll loop through all of the countries and then we will grab the country so Uh, if I just do that, we return all of the countries, and that's literally what you want. So now, what we want to do is we want to take input from a user for a particular country. So that's actually really simple. Uh, country underscore name is equal to input. Enter country. All right. Now what we want to do is we only want to show the stuff about the country if the country's name is valid. So like if the country's name is present inside of the uh, this API, only then we want to show that uh, some data. Otherwise, we don't want to do anything. So I will actually cut, delete that part. So I will say if the country underscore name I'm sorry country name is equals to I'm sorry if e is equals to country name in res so if that's the case we'll print out the country name in res and if that's not the case I simply will pass out and I yeah, am just for the sake of it I will also just break out of the loop after that so now I will just go down and I will also just uh, comment out this JSON stuff. Okay. So now I will just run this whole thing again. So entry country, enter country name. So I will enter. So I know that. So I will just enter India and it will print out India. Now if I just enter something gibberish, let's see, so if I enter some incorrect country name, you can see that it does not print out anything. And that's what you want. So if I just try out some other countries, I, like I don't remember all of them, I think Dubai was one of them. Okay, Dubai wasn't. Okay, let's try out some of these things. Australia, okay, Australia, let's try out Australia. Australia and we get Australia all right so that was pretty cool so now what we have done is we have made a little bit of a text based interface for this but we instead of actually print it out, printing out only the country name we want to print out the cases now printing out the cases is actually very straightforward it's actually as straightforward as what we just did here so I will just type out country underscore and Let's actually see what are the actual things in this. If we check out the countries, so we have the country, the country code, the slug, the new confirmed, the total confirmed, the new deaths, and the total deaths. So we want the total confirmed and the total deaths. I think. Okay, I think. So I think then I think uh, more importantly, we'll we'll have the new confirmed, the total confirmed, the new death, and the uh, total deaths. So, 
for now i will just have a country new underscore con formed is equals to the country's list the ith element and instead of country we will grab the new confirmed and over here if that is the case i will also print out uh, actually i will just print out an f string and uh, over here i will print it out like this the name of the country is uh, the new confirmed cases are and what was the new confirmed cases variable name country new confirmed so country underscore new underscore confirmed confirmed okay looks like i've messed up the spellings so i will paste it here all right so let's see if this works i will run this again make this a bit bigger so name of the country is india and the new confirmed cases are uh, 30 357,316 awesome like not awesome in that way but awesome that a code worked in that way like how many cases are there pretty sad so now what we want to do is also want to grab what 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 else do we want the new text so what i will have here is the same thing literally the same thing i'm just gonna copy this literally and uh, escape out of this i and paste it and as we know instead of new confirm we just want to name it new deaths and new this thing will be named as deaths oops deaths. all right so now that we are done with that i'll just copy that and option actually just do that and the uh, new deaths continue uh, so I will just run this again and put in my country name and there we go uh, the code is working probably so let's try out some other country again I know that Australia is working so Australia okay I that was embarrassing Let's try out some other one. Andorra. I think I have never heard of this country. So let's see. Okay, it looks like this country is doing pretty good. Uh, pretty good. So whatever. So as you can see over here, we have almost done with the terminal based application. Now we just need to port this to our website. Uh, so now what we need to do is we need to grab the total confirmed cases and the total deaths so i will literally just have some copy paste statements over here i really like that so i will just go over your country new deaths and i'll just actually instead of i'll just copy that one so i will need to modify less code so country instead of new confirmed we obviously need to name it um, total confirmed copy that and put that in there so now we need the we got the total confirmed cases and now oops uh, head on over here and the total confirmed cases are the total con country total confirmed so again run this code like let's see if Antarctica is even in the Antarctica okay it's not there. so let's try out some other country let's start with them like Spain and we have the data 
and now that we have the country total confirmed we need the country total tax so i will head on over here so country new debts i will just copy that country new debts line and copy that go here paste that and do the country oops okay that's okay vim is being very bad with me right now okay country total debts and copy that and do that all right also the total number of debts are country total debts so now that we have all of our data uh, let's try out Italy and there we go we have all of the data that we returned and that's pretty cool so in this video we pretty much just did that much uh, let me have a check and see recording okay so it's almost like half an hour so i think i'm gonna wrap it up in this video we will do this other stuff in the other video so as you can see it's a pretty simple application till now uh, it's not that complicated in any way uh, but it's a pretty cool app if you look at it like like 30 lines of code uh, like the, the code could be improved but i don't think so so it's a pretty good application i will have uh, like the, the this other video will be coming very very soon so you definitely want to stick around for that one so in this video you learn a lot so try this out with other apis like not just this one try it out with some other api or other urls and all of that like apis are very important if you look at like coding really like coding aspect so try them out like you definitely don't want to screw up your knowledge in apis uh, they are something that are core to i would say programming so try doing this with other data other apis try parsing them like if you cannot like grab data such nicely uh, then just return it just print it out like just like those write those five lines of code to print them out like this one so even it took me some time to get attached to this stuff now just one quick notice if you are trying to do this then if some of these services have this thing called an api key so what you want to do is once you do that you also want to specify this thing called params and you want to specify it to be as a dictionary and then you want to just say app id and just do that and paste your api key over here and then just put it that. and all of those things just put it over there put it in this thing called params and then what you want to do is in request.get url you want to also pass in params okay just do that and it will work uh, in case if you have that problem like some of the apis have that thing uh, some do not so it's, it's it will be up to you and you can also do this in other ways like you don't have to just use request there is this thing called http response but it is not that good like request is one of the best ways to do this one of the, one of the quickest fastest and the best ways to do this uh, so that's why i'm using this you can use anything else that you want uh, it's up to you totally up to you and i think it's pretty cool till now like just by writing some lines of code and pulling stuff from this api uh, yeah so just to show you something really cool we started out with this much data which is pretty uh, much a lot and we ended up by parsing it with well a really good result like such a good thing like you can just put in your country name and get the stats so yeah so that's pretty cool now in the next video i probably will make a website for this or something like that i don't know maybe like some tick and tagui 
I will look into it. What if I want to make a website or a tick and tag GUI? But I probably will go for a website. I, I don't know at this point. I will see. So that's it for today, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video. It was a lot of fun making this one. Uh, I was hoping to make a video like this for a long time. Like, I, I really wanted to contribute something to COVID 19. And as a program, I don't think I could have done it any better. Like, I already have made a video on classifying COVID 19 images. So I think this will be pretty cool. Like, I don't think it's an actual big contribution, but it's pretty good. And I think all of us should play our part and all of us should spread awareness and defeat this pandemic. So, yeah, that's all for this video. Uh, yeah, so check out the next video where we actually create some GUI or something like that. But I will look into it. And also, like, I'm pretty busy these days. So, yeah, that's one of the reasons because I'm actually working on something really good. And it's not actually programming related, but it's actually physics related. So that's something really cool. And I will have a video on that uh, probably in some time. I don't know. I will see if I can manage to get it done and, and something like that. If I can manage to get it done, then I will have a video on it. Otherwise not. But if I can get it done, then it will be really good. And I think you will like it a lot. So yeah. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. It was really a lot of fun making that for today, guys. Hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, like and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in another YouTube video.